Hello, Royal State Resource. Ready to go. Cardiac arrest, five minutes. X-ray. Hello, Resource. We've got a trauma as well. Let's go on radio calls. Barry, you all right? Can you ring transfusion? Can we send the porter there to get the blood now? I know you're not very comfortable, but it's really important you lie flat for the moment, OK? Have you had any other pain? My head. In your head? He's had about 20 milligrams of morphine, and he's still rolling around the bed in pain. It's a big, thick clot. It's too thick to come out of most of our heads. What was you doing on the room? You got this big hole in your head, all right, and it keeps bleeding, which is why you're not feeling very well. Elderly people don't do so well when they fall off roofs. Resting at 28, a pyrex. Can you check me some fentanyl out? I'm with that one, It's okay. Hello, Rizos. How old? I've been moving this one out to bring the other one in. Abdominal pain, okay? Abdominal yeah, aortic aneurysm. A known case. Triple A. I'll get it, take it. Bye. Rest, but move around. Does that make sense? So, an elderly gentleman with a known aortic aneurysm, so it means that his main blood vessel in his tummy is already weak and expanded. That's a surgical emergency because if it pops, then the patient will just bleed out and die straight away. Have you got a radio pulse? No radios. No radios. So this is Barry, an uh, 85 year old gentleman. Found in his bedroom by his son. Thought he wasn't breathing, so commenced some CPR. On our arrival, Barry was in a confused state. Very pale pallor all over. A systolic blood pressure of 55. Barry? No. You alright? No. No. Why? Because of pain? Well, you just don't feel very well. First thing we need to do is ultrasound scan the aorta and see what we can find. Uh, it's got a massive one here as well. Yeah. Uh, you can see it going into the, the wall there as well. Hopefully it's not ruptured into the belly. Can you ring CT and put them on hold? So an elderly gentleman with an aortic aneurysm, so this is the main blood vessel it takes all your blood from your heart to your abdomen, your pelvis, legs. If this vessel pops, he'll die within minutes. Barry, you know you've got this big wide blood vessel in your, in your tummy. Yeah. The problem at the moment is it might be leaking and that's why you're not well, okay. Yeah. The scan shows that it's quite big, okay. So what we need to do is take you to the CT scanner. All right. Now, the problem is, if this, if this bursts, then that's going to kill you. You just need to stay nice and calm for us. I know you're not very well, but we're going to give you some painkillers, give you stuff to stop you feeling sick, and then we're going to get this scan, all right, and see if we need to do anything for you, all right? If this suddenly pops, do you want us to try and resuscitate you? Yeah. Okay. If you need surgery, would you want surgery on this? Yeah, I'm sitting in there. If we go to CT now, can we make sure we need his blood to go off and stuff just in case we I need damage? Me. Now. Okay, just watch yourself on this. I oh, know it's a bit tired. Not very well at the moment, are you? Okay. Put this back on. When you're presented with an elderly patient who's got a known aneurysm, you start to worry. 90% will die before they get to the operating table. Maybe 10% will actually survive the operation and make it through to the other side. Ready, steady, slide. Do you want his head in that? Okay. No, no, just chest to pelvis. You're, just going, you're, having a, you're having a scan, all right? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, you had to have a quick look. I mean, on the ultrasound, it looks like it's quite sort of dilated most of the way down. Breathe in and hold your breath. We worry that potentially there's a leak either into the abdominal space or into the vessel wall itself. Oh, 
Yeah, that's ruptured. Oh yeah, it's, uh, can you put it through to the basket console on call, please? Oh, hi, it's Richard. So this guy's in CT at the moment. He's got active contrast in his abdomen, so he's got active bleeding of his aorta into, into it. It looks about inferenal kind of area. Okay, yep, thanks, that's what you said. We're going to get him off the table. He's got a leaking aneurysm. There's loads of blood in his belly. Uh, it's leaking from his main blood vessel, so at the moment this is very time critical. The scanner's done. Yeah. Let's, let's get him out when he's getting yeah. back to resource. So, can we MHP on him, please? Have you seen the scanner tool? I have. I'm not sure his physiology would permit him to have a heroic open surgery. We can give it a try. I mean, the patient's keen. I already asked him if you know, if the surgery is an option, would he want it? And he's, he's verbalised that he's, he's keen for it, so... Yeah, if, he's, um, if he's suitable enough to be transferred, we can give him a last shot in the patient. Yeah, I mean... A very high chance that he won't make it. Um, but if that's the last ever shot that we give him, we can give it a shot. The wishes of that, I mean, obviously that's... Any percentage of survival is better than zero. By doing nothing, you, you're basically saying, like, you know, this is it, you, you've got minutes, seconds to live. Um, whereas I think at least trying to offer them some kind of alternative, to me, that's important. Richard? Yeah? I've got Sun on the phone. Hello? Hi, uh, my name's Richard. I'm one of the A&E consultants. Your father's very ill, OK? Um, I mean, if possible, I, I'd advise you to come up to hospital. OK? And as soon as you get here, let reception know. Um, and like I say, ask for me, or ju just give your father's name and say he's in recess, um, and, and they'll bring you straight through, okay? Okay, and we'll see you when you get here, okay? Okay, thank you, bye-bye. What's wrong, Barry? I know you do, but it's really important you lie flat for the moment, okay? This big blood vessel in your tummy, yeah. okay, is bleeding. If you move around too much, you can make this bleeding worse. So I think we, we'll take him down to theatre. Yeah. And we shouldn't really wait anymore for our family. No, family, family's not going to be here in time. If he's going to survive, you know, we've given him the best possible chance. But uh, at this time, it's, you know, it's impossible to say what the outcome is going to be. Can safely scan his head. Hello, Stephen. As soon as I let go of his jaw, his airway is compromised. He's not showing any signs that he's waking up. Royal State Resource can help. This man is refusing to have any treatment and he's going to die. He doesn't. Bed three has an ITU doctor. Head injury, shoulder injury, and leg injury. There's a gentleman coming in who's fallen off the roof of his shed. He's got a serious head injury. So this is potentially a really sick patient. One, two, three. Trevor is standing on top of his shed roof, approximately eight foot high. He's become unsteady. He has fallen down, caused the lack to his head. We've got our trauma mesh in there, several bandages. He has got a nasty lack to this left part here, and I can see through to cartilage. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Is it Trevor? Uh -huh. Hi Trevor, I'm Richard, I'm one of the trauma consultants here. Mm. How are you feeling? Sick. <laughs> okay, how's your pain? Oh. Is it? It's mainly your head, is it? Anywhere else, what about your chest or your pelvis? Okay. We're gonna give you some more painkillers, all right? And then we need to do some x-rays and some scans for you. See if you've broken anything. Yeah. All right. The worrying thing is, the older you get, your skeletal structure gets weaker and makes you more prone to fractures. They might have something that's hidden. You know, you could have a ruptured spleen or internal hemorrhage, a fracture in their neck, and it severs their spinal cord, and actually it's a life-threatening injury. Is your son coming up, do you know? 
Okay, we'll try and find out for you and we'll keep him in the loop, all right? Okay. You're sick. Are you gonna be sick or? Just roll in that way. Vomiting causes us concern when someone's got a head injury. It can be a sign that there's increasing pressure on the brain. As well as the vomiting, he's also crashed his blood pressure, so that could be a sign that his brain's been squeezed through the bottom of his skull. So we're kind of planning for the worst, but obviously, you know, we're hoping for the best. You know, he's still bleeding from his head wound. You think we can lie you back again? Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Nice and steady. Do you want some undone? Yeah. Trevor, you got this big hole in your head. I just want to pop a couple of stitches in there for you, try and stop it bleeding for you, okay? You're right to bring in the surgical light from one. The round one. Pass me some more gauze. He's bled an awful lot from his head wounds. You know, he's probably lost at least half a pint or something like that. So if he continues to bleed, I mean, you can bleed your whole circulating volume from a head wound. So it's quite important that you stop that bleeding. So Trevor, we're just going to go get your CT scan now. All right. So we're going to take him around right now and get a scan and see what's going on. Given the fact he's 75, it's what we call silver trauma, you know, elderly people don't do so well when they fall off the roofs of sheds and stuff like that. So Trevor, we're just at the CT scanner now, okay. Okay. Everyone got a bit? Ready, steady, slide. What is his GC at the moment? Uh, it's between sort of 14, 15. Just dropping one on eyes at the moment. It's a little bit kind of lethargic and Withdrawn. So extensive bruising, but mm -hmm. no um, acute intracranial hemorrhage that I can see. I can't see any bleeding or anything internally, but I need to have. Yeah, yeah, bruising. that's fine. Uh, I think you can come off the table. I'll have a more closer look. Yeah, uh, that's great. Thank you. Bleeding. Thank you. So Trevor, the plan now is we just need to keep you here for a little bit. We're going to warm you up, okay, control your pain for you um, while we wait for the official report of the CT scan, all right? If your son turns up, no. should we bring him in for you? No. Okay. He doesn't want his covers up at the minute because he's feeling a bit warm with it, so we just come and have a chat to him. Bosh, you've got a visitor. Right, guys. Oh, so. Okay. Yeah, he's just a bit woozy. Yeah, yeah, up there. Oh, okay. Down, down, go down. There. Oh, right, yeah. Hopefully, he'll go for an MI. Yeah. Fairly shortly. Yeah. Okay. So That's Thank brilliant. You. Thank you. Sorry. Also, resource going to help. Hi, yeah, you're right. I'm Richard, I'm on the trauma consultants here. Um, Trevor, yeah. we've just got some of the results of the scan for you, okay? Yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like you've broken your neck. Oh, dear. All right. Now, yeah. the good thing is you're moving your arms and legs, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a total disaster just yet, okay? Mm -hmm. What it does mean is we need to keep you lying flat. Okay, like this for the moment, all right? And you are going to have to go for another scan, like a special MRI scan of your spine, okay? And it might mean you need an operation as well, okay? So, you're going to be with us for a bit longer, all right? Have you got any questions for me just yet? Not just yet. <laughs> are you happy if I talk to your son? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, literally, just a second, the radiologist came and told me, so we've only just found out. Where's he actually... Broke it in his neck, haven't Kind of. So the main area we're worried about is this bit here. So where the flexible bit of the neck goes into the solid kind of chest cage, 
the, the spine at the back, that fixed point is where he's damaged it. Obviously, scary for you, I understand, because when someone tells you your dad's broken his neck, you always think the worst. But the fact that he's moving his arms and legs hopefully means that the cord is not too damaged. And if the cord does okay, then hopefully, you know, there's no reason why once we stabilize the bones that he can't stand up, walk and do everything as normal and stuff, okay? So he's come to the right place. We've got a spinal team here, a neurosurgical team, so he doesn't need to go anywhere else. You know, he's, he's had the injury. What we're doing now is trying to stop any secondary injuries. That's why he's in this special type of collar. That's why we're keeping him laid flat, and that's why we're going for the MRI scan and stuff. Anything else you need? No. Okay. Looking through his scans here, you can see some disruption of the, the bottom of his neck here. At the moment, the spinal cord is still working. However, if it gets compressed, then that can cause lifelong or even life-threatening uh, complications. Is. But we don't want to do anything to compromise that cord, because at the moment, that's, that's the most important thing. Fracture on both sides. She's in a lot of pain. She's requiring a lot of emergency. You know, your dad has had this. We've been trying to get to come here. Hi, Venice, Richard. Oh, OK. Uh, what time did he die? All right. Uh, I'll talk to him a bit. All right. Yeah, so he died. Some of these patients will die in front of you despite everyone's best effort just because they're just too sick and you just can't save them. And then you've got to go break the worst possible news to the family members and then, you know, that's, that's when it all starts to hit you. Hello? Hi, oh, yeah, it's Richard. When he came in here, everything was done for him, but unfortunately, you, you know, he, he was just too sick and he didn't make it. Uh, that's all right. You take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Practitioner. You feel short of breath? Yeah. Okay, got any pain in your chest? Yeah. Whereabouts? Just a pain here. Just a pain there. Is he coming by helicopter then? No, it's okay. Oh. Try not to get upset. Just thinking about the little girl. You're fine, sir. Thanks. Bye. There's a 42 year old male who's coming in with chest pain and he'd had a previous heart attack. So we think there's a possibility that it's what's happening now. He was actually in cardiology a few weeks ago. He had some stents put in at that point. Hello there. Is it Michael? My name's Sarah. I'm a cardiac assessment nurse. I'm just going to pop some stickers on your chest. Do you have any other medical problems? No, just a heart attack you've had in the past. Two heart attacks. Two heart attacks. Okay. And is this pain that you've got today, is this the same as when you had your heart attack? Yeah. yeah. Exactly the same. It just feels a bit more intense. When did this pain come on? This afternoon. He's only 42 and he's had a previous heart attack, which is what's happening now. Give us your arm, Shug. Which is all quite rare and so on. Relatively young. Thank you. Uh. Have you been feeling sick or anything like that? No. No. Get what, sorry? Um, yeah, you can do. But... I'm just going to be taking some bloods and just putting a line in to start you some treatment later, okay? Hiya, it's Sarah. Um, I've got a chap in resource at the moment. He's come back in with quite a bit of chest pain. He's had about 20 milligrams of morphine and he's still rolling around the bed in pain. So he's in resource at the moment. Um, so is it all right if I just bring him straight up to you? Brilliant. Michael? We're going to take you up to cardiology and we're going to do a 
the angiogram procedure, which you had done when you were here last time. I'm going to have a look and see what's going on. OK. Yeah, well, thank you. Seen his notes? He's going to have a long, thin tube put in the artery in his arm, so that goes up to the arteries around the heart. And so we can see where the blockages are, if there are any. Thank you. Most heart attacks are driven by the fact that there's a degree of furring up in the artery um, caused by cholesterol plaques. Yeah. I've already treated Mr. Mouncey once and this is driven by the fact he's got a clotting abnormality, so um, his blood's too sticky. What we're taking pictures of at the minute is the left coronary artery, which is normal. Let's just see if we can get one picture of the right. It's blocked completely so that's a third of the blood supply of the heart so the same artery that was blocked last time has, has blocked again and um, what we're going to do is um, just going to unblock that now when the artery is blocked if you do nothing all the muscle beyond the blockage would, um, would die and uh, that part of the heart wouldn't beat normally so the quicker you open it the more of the heart muscle survive nice and still Michael doing really well The biggest issue here is the amount of clot that's present makes it very difficult to get it out. Last time we couldn't get it through the small catheter, we're going to need to use a much bigger one to try and get the clot out. You all right? Mr. Mansi? If the patients are young, you know, the staff all feel a little bit uneasy with it because it's a sense of your own mortality that an event like a heart attack could affect anyone and you don't know until it happens and that makes people uncomfortable. Okay, so just... Uh... Are you OK? How are you feeling? Light-headed. When you've got a clot in the coronary artery, the clot's made up of a blood cell component called platelets. It's quite fine, you can break it up and aspirate it through quite a small catheter. But this, it's a big, thick clot. It's too thick to come out of most of our catheters. So we ended up using a much bigger catheter that's actually designed for another reason. It's designed to put stents down in deep into the artery. That was the blood clot that's in the artery. So that's what we've just pulled out. You can see it has the outline of the artery. So if we didn't do this procedure, all the muscle beyond the blockage would, um, would die and uh, it'd be left with a, uh, a degree of where that, that part of the heart wouldn't beat normally. We, we know that some of that exists already from the previous heart attack. Then. So at the minute, we've unblocked the artery and what we can see here is the fact that we restored flow. We don't know whether the, how much damage there is at this stage. So we're going to use a camera that goes inside the artery that works by using near infrared light to give us a very high resolution picture of the inside of the artery. You can see that the artery's round. See the wire that we use, this is the catheter. And as you come back up, up the artery, you can see that the artery is narrowed, but I know that a month ago it wasn't. And this is a uh, blood clot. Now, uh, Ordinarily, we'd put stents in to push cholesterol plaques out of the way, but with clot, you just let it dissolve, let the drugs do the work. We need to just have, bring you back in a couple of days and have another look at it. Don't move your arm, then. Okay. It's like flicking a switch. As, as soon as I pull the clot and let the blood start to flow through the arteries again, it's, uh, it's, the pain's instantly off, it's gone. Such a relief, such a relief. It's just too much. Just, I'm just scared. Well, you're my baby. You'd get some more air dye, wouldn't you? Great <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're a lot more alert this time than you were three weeks ago. Didn't you? You're strong. Your dad and his mouth, so. well, I just have to carry on again, I suppose. 
Don't you laugh at me. <laughs> Okay, guys, let's pause to do a rhythm check. Still in fine VF, so continue compressions for me. We're not getting very good CO2, but we've got bilateral air entry. Okay. Pedestrian versus car. 40 mile um, speed. Sorry, VP126 over. She's known epileptic, and since then she's had two seizures. She's got a left fractured tib and fib. Put, yeah. So that's third shock as well, so can we give some amiodarone as well? You know, a 40 mile an hour collision can kill someone. One of the things we worry about is, is a potential pelvic injury when, when you've got this direct trauma, you know, and high energy transfer to, to your lower limbs as well. She's Katrina, she's 28, she's walking across the road and got hit by a car. Ready, steady, move. Her injuries are lower leg the left side. She's also got a head trauma on the forehead where she probably hit the curb. Got a history of having epilepsy. Yeah. Chronic fit, so... Yeah, full back. Full back. Yeah. How long did they last for? Two minutes. Yeah. Is anyone with it? So yes. We know who family. she is. Family, family, family where we've got all the details and everything. Excellent. All right, guys. Can we do a primary assessment? Hello, Katrina. I'm Dr. Patel. Just going to feel some slight bending behind you, alright, honey? Right, all uh, equal pupils, reactive for life. Can we just lift this leg, see if there's any pain in the pelvis? Sorry, man. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So she's got pain in that leg as well. Okay, given the fact that she's already, we know she's got low limb trauma and now she's got pain on what they think thought was the unaffected side as well. Uh, until we can get her through scan, we'll just put a binder on her just as a precaution. Uh, make sure she's not got a pelvic injury. I'm going to give you a painkiller now. Make you feel a bit dizzy. Can we just cut this off, make sure there's no hidden injury under this this leg here? Just cut in your jeans, sweetheart. We can try and get a baseline blood pressure as well. We need a nurse. So she's off the oxygen now, I should. No, and she's still tachycardic. Well, pressure's still cycling, let's try and get that, but she's got a good good radial pulse. Let's give her a gram of TXA, let's get a binder on her until we go around to scan and let's get her bloods off and stuff. Okay, so, so just looking at that, it doesn't look great. Yeah. She does have an obviously deformed closed lower injury here, so she's going to need quite a good bit of analgesia. So once we've got that on board, then we'll just, we need to pull this straight and put it in a box for the side. Um, while she's here, we're giving her painkillers. Let's uh, try and get a better splint than this. So she's had three seizures, had two rounds of midazolam. So, but she isn't known epileptic, so whether we just decrease the seizure threshold. Yes, she'll be bleeding from a fracture uh, within the leg, but yeah, if she's got a pelvic injury, she could be bleeding from that. And you know, if she's got a brain injury, she could be bleeding from that as well. So. Is it Katrina? You okay? Hi, Katrina. My name's Richard. I'm one of the trauma consultants here. Is we want to take you around for a CT scan, okay? And we're basically going to scan you from your head to your pelvis, okay? Make sure we don't miss anything, okay? Because that gives us really detailed imaging, uh, just showing us if anything's broken or anything like that. Obviously, we're a little bit worried about your head because you've had some fits. Now, I know you're an athletic, but obviously, if you've sustained a head injury and you start fitting, for us, that can be a concerning feature. So we want to make sure that you're not damaged your brain as well, okay? If you have any questions at any point, you just let us know, okay? And I think your family's coming up as well, so once, once we get you back from SCAM, we'll bring them in and you can have a chat to them as well. Um, CT's ready for you. Go ahead, just come in the middle and stuff. I'm going to give you some more pain relief, yeah. okay? I've, her leg is a bit straight, isn't it? Right, ready, steady, roll. Just yeah, let like go with that for a little. <laughs> Sorry. Can you just, if we just... 
Can you just pull it towards me a little? Queen I'm just giving you more painkillers, okay? Yeah, please. Alright, I've just, just done Sorry. that. Sorry. Okay, no, it's fine. Right. So. When a patient comes through the doors of A&E, you've got to think worst case scenario before you can be reassured that there's nothing wrong with the patient. Even if someone looks fairly well, they might have something subtle that's, that's hidden that's not apparent when you're first examining them or they're not complaining of pain in a certain area. You know, you could have a, a ruptured spleen or kidney or something like that. There could be bleeding in the background that's a life-threatening injury. Head looks all right. And quick glance doesn't show anything, sort of too sinister. So hopefully, it's just her epilepsy that's causing her to keep fit rather than any sort of major trauma. I mean, if she stays nice and stable, we'll go from here to x ray and then. Yeah. Anyway, there was a liver laceration. Yeah, there is a liver laceration. Oh, okay. Just there where there's the dark patches. Mm -hmm. So the dark patches are cut in Already we've seen from the scan that she's got a hidden injury. She's lacerated her liver. It's one of those big organs in the body that's really got a big blood supply. So, you know, when it, when it gets damaged, you know, you can lose an awful lot of blood. And then the other thing is pain in the pelvis. It's fine. Nothing in the pelvis, no. Okay, let's get off the table. Let's quickly go to x-ray. Image this lower limb, and then we can at least get her in plaster, and then I've just bleeped the surgical reg, so. Obviously, a big problem for her at the moment is her floppy leg, because obviously that's really painful. Okay. Well done. Needs to get the surgeons to come have a look at her liver laceration, but sometimes that just stops bleeding by itself. Um, which will be good news for her because that will hopefully mean she doesn't need an operation. However, looking at this broken leg, that's, that's going to need an operation because that's, uh, that's not going to heal by itself. If she wants to go back to running and walking normally, she's gonna, probably going to need a metal plate. Katrina. Now we've got the x-rays, we can put you in a plaster and that will stop your leg flopping around and that's going to take a lot of your pain away. Do you want me to go get you? Is it your mum, do you know, or who's, do you know who's with you? Okay, so just stay here for a minute. Are you with Katrina by any chance? Yeah. What we've done while you've been waiting here is we've scanned her from her head down to her pelvis through the CT scanner. Right. Uh, and then we've just done some x-rays because unfortunately she's broken her, her left leg. Right. Okay. Um, so we're just about to put that in plaster for her. Right. It'd be good for her to see you guys yeah. and I think she wants to reassure you that she's all right because she knows you'll be worrying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Which way? I'll follow you. Yeah, yeah, if you come this way. Katrina. Hiya. Yeah. I've got all your family here, okay. They can come and see you now, all right. Do you recall anything of it? I just, I remember crossing and there was a car coming. You screamed and then, and then, and then you just, uh, it went, all this I heard you was you screaming and it just went, then the phone and I was trying to talk to you but there was nothing, I could just hear you screaming in the background. Are you in pain? Have you got any pain? Oh, they give me stuff. They give you stuff. Yeah, it's all the good stuff, don't yeah. worry. Okay, everybody hands on the longboard, please. None of the gear is the chest wall, so I can't get a train into it. We have a set of hands in bed one, please. Is this a patient? Uh, this is Violet, 73 years of age. Yep. Um, she's had a fall from a push scooter. Fallen face first, and unconscious for approximately a minute. Porter, please to resource as soon as possible.
ready, steady, slide. So uh, basically she's gonna fall from the scooter. Hi Violet. Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Salimi. Can I kindly ask where is it hurting you? My head, my head, my head. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I press your neck, does it hurt? No. Does it hurt in, in the right hip? Yes. Do you think you can lift your leg up? Can you open your eyes, please? Uh. And she will need a uh, CT head and neck. Sorry, love. I'm cold. Okay, we'll get get the blankets for you. Can you open your eyes again? Yes. I'm cold. All right. Do you know where are you now? Uh, hospital. All right. Okay. She's having really significant injuries on her head. There is a swelling on the right orbit. We just need to wait for the painkillers. Kick in first and then we'll take her for the CT. Ah! Are you okay? I want to be sick. I want to be sick. Okay, just a second, just a second. Oh. Turn her over. Oh, I want to be sick. Yeah, if you get, do a sick, that's fine. Just clean her eyes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Ready, steady, roll. Oh! You want I'm going to get you some painkillers now, sweetie pie. Vomiting after a head injury is never a good sign. I'm more worried about bleeding in the brain. And if the patient is keep vomiting, it can compromise the airway as well. Yeah, let's move. But we still need to take her for the CT scan. Okay, Violet. Yeah. You just need to relax. Yeah? Ready, steady, slide. Oh. Ah, ah. Violet, you are just going for the scan now. All right? Yeah. Just try to stay still. It will just take a few minutes. All right? Over. Right. She has proper like swollen. She is swollen. Yeah. It's, when you look at her. Yeah. There's no pneumothorax. There's no hemothorax. No hemoperitoneum. There's no injury to the liver or spleen. She's got a lot of uh, superficial soft tissue injury, but there's no hemorrhage inside the brain. Take her off the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, Brian. I'm sorry. Look. You don't need to be sorry. <clears throat> Violet. Yeah. Yeah. We will put the warmer on. Yeah. Yeah. So that you don't feel cold. I feel freezing. Okay. Freezing. Regarding the scan. It doesn't look like any chest, any injuries. I know she cannot open the eyes. It looks really bad at the moment, but she will get better. I think she is a bit lucky. Yeah? Very lucky. Because the good thing is the brain is okay. Yeah. All right? Yeah. They've done a full body scan. Have they? Yeah. Not broken anything, have I? I don't seem to think so. I told you you should have stopped the down. Dinner. She's not frightened of doing anything. She's not frightened of doing anything at all. Even at her age. Which can be a bit... a bit... upsetting sometimes. Because you don't tell her not to do anything. <laughs> it's, it's the worst thing you can do. But she's been liked all her life. There's no getting away from that. Haven't you? I've got black eyes. Oh, uh, you've got a corker. Well, you've had a scan, and they said so far there's no brain damage. I've asked them to have another look. <laughs> oh, just to resource, please.
flatten in the bed down a bit, Trevor. Yeah. Which side's easier for you to roll onto, Trev? Which? Which side's easiest to roll? That way? Yeah, any road there. Oh, which... no. Towards me then, young man. It's like a morning workout, isn't it? It's a new workout, The brace helps to mobilise the whole spine when he's moving around so that it doesn't dislodge anything, keeps it all nice in position while it feels yeah. right. How does it feel? <laughs> it's <not even> weak. <laughs> Is it hurting anywhere? No, it's not really hurting, no. Does it feel like you have more support, can you tell? Y yeah. It's a good job I fell down the side, I know. If I'd have gone down the other side, nobody would have found me yet. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I just must have slipped. I can't remember that, but I can remember rolling down the roof. And then it's up in memory since the deck. And uh, I don't know, I've got a bit, a bit of a pickle here. So I couldn't move my arm. So I couldn't sort of get myself up. And uh, then I felt the blood running down my head. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? I've seen that you are in a good, good uh, shape today. Yes. It, you broke three, three vertebrae in your in your spine, and the options are to do operation or to do a brace, mm -hmm. and we took the decision to treat it in the brace. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will hope this fracture will take about six to eight weeks to heal. It might take longer, but this is the time we, you will have the brace applied on. Yeah. If there is any weakness yeah. or pins and needles or in your arms or your yeah in your shoulders or something like that, to let us know. Mm -hmm. Because this is this will be one 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 of the indications that you might need to have something done. Mm -hmm. But otherwise we are quite happy with the with the progress that you are making. Okay. Okay? Yes, fine. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, all the best. <laughs> okay. Hello, Stoke Recess. Wow. Pretty serious accident. We've got car versus car. The reason you come to work is because you want to make a difference. You want to save someone's life. You want to ease their suffering, improve their quality of life. Everyone's trying their best to do that for the patient. Yeah, we'll refer you for some home help and they'll have you for Despite everyone's best efforts, we just can't save everyone. But, you know, when we can save one, that's what we're here for, you know, we're here to make a difference. There we are. How's that? That better? Are you okay? Oh. When this trauma comes in, you're out to do a primary service? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I think it's head on RTC, two fatalities at the scene. Being confronted with patients that have been brought in with life threatening situations who might or might not make it through the day, it really makes you stop and think. Life's too short, you need to make the most of things. And I guess doing this job and seeing what we see, you're reminded by that every single day. Patients here, guys. Evening. 